The year is 2017, and as you do in 2070, as a matter of fact, probably in 2016 and 18, I decided to go on a surf trip with some friends of mine. I was a beginner, so I wasn't quite clear what uh, I was supposed to do on the surf, but there was a few things that I was certain of. We needed to have sun, we needed to have a surfboard, and also a beach. <laughs> um, the first day, we decided to go to the most famous beach, and unfortunately, the site, well, there was no site, uh, there was trash. The trash was overwhelming, and it was quite shocking that this place that was financially benefiting from the beauty of nature and from the fact that there was waves constantly was unfortunately covered in trash. I did what I love to do, I started cleaning. Um, I collected six pairs of shoes, construction site material, glass, clothes, and all sorts of traces of human existence. And it was enough to understand that uh, there was something murky in the water. How was it possible that we were not enough fascinated by nature to actually respect it? At that point of time, um, the knowledge that I had about pollution and human-created climate change was the size of this dot that conveniently matches the styling of Tech uh, And even though I didn't know enough, I was seeking answers. And as you do, I found them um, in books, podcasts, videos, and all sorts of channels such as scientific journals. There was a lot of different statements, there was opinions. People were claiming that technology was going to save the day that it was veganism, that it was regenerative agriculture. And although there was a variation in all these opinions, there was one thing that was constantly reiterated. We needed to act immediately in a structured and aligned manner. Well, this was enough for me uh, to actually quit my job and decide to build Plan A. And the first step that I took together with my team, was to essentially understand what people's opinions were and what the different stakeholders were thinking about climate change. We spoke to over 200 people, from governmental figures to institutional uh, investors, to activists and all sorts of actors that had, such as NGOs, startups, corporates, that had opinions and also somewhat solutions. And Unfortunately, what we found out was that there was as many minds as there were heads. We then, as a second step of the investigation, moved on to data. Uh, in Plan A, data is driving every single decision that we make, and these three, three statistics have been the ones that have been inviting us to constantly make sure that we are aligned with our mission. One of them is about corporates. corporates and 91% of them that have no preparedness, that have no agenda on how to fight climate change. The second statistic is incredibly shocking because it speaks about how unaware of the possibilities of solutions we are, given the lack of investment for sustainability and environmental solutions. And the final one uh, is about Actually, these environmental organizations, the NGOs, the grassroots, the people that have developed solutions that are on the ground and face climate change on a day-to-day basis, that are underrepresented online and are invisible to us, making the issue even bigger. The second data step that we took was the one that is my favorite, is following science. Plan A has looked at data about emissions, about stress levels on flora and fauna, about agriculture, about economics. And this data that was always quoted in all of these podcast journals and other sources that I was looking at in the beginning was also shouting quite loudly that there was a lot that could be done and there were solutions. After finishing with a long investigative journey of actually making sure that we understand what climate change is and we follow science, we established the three founding principles of Plan A. The first one was about the importance of businesses in the fight against climate change. Businesses are 
incredibly impactful. They have a lot of people that they influence. They influence their lives, they influence the choices that they make in terms of developing further, and they influence their minds. They're also willing to move fast, and they also create majority amount of emissions on this planet. The second topic was about climate change science. Science had not only has been talking to us about climate change since decades, but also it was speaking to us about solutions. And it was giving us an opportunity to actually rethink the way that we were living for a long, long time. And of course, when all of these journals and all of these articles are buried under piles and piles of research, you kind of don't have access to this. So we made sure since day one that this was in the core of what we were building, making sure that we are always aligned to science and always follow the principles of it. The final one was the need to be collaborative in our approach. Because a startup with a good vision is one that matters uh, to their family and friends, but it actually has no impact whatsoever. A startup that fights climate change is one that is so reliant on its ecosystem. Not only the government, not only the corporates, but also the activists, also the NGOs, to make sure that it has an effective, aligned and structured action. As a first step, uh, Plan A build an academy. The Plan A Academy is the place where we disseminate scientific knowledge, we speak with respect about science, but we also make sure that people understand science. We speak in a digesti digestible manner and make sure that the science is aligned to your day-to-day. -day. The science speaks about your day-to-day -day in your office, and it also connects you to stories of people who have actually implemented sustainability in their existence. The second thing that we built uh, was our algorithm. Our algorithm uses over 300,000 data points to, related to oceans, forests, wildlife, sustainable living, sustainable energy, waste management, to predict where and how climate change will hit the hardest. We are able to look at, on a country level and on a regional level, and say how the climate change agenda of this particular place is going to shift in the next 30 years. To make this digestible and useful also to individuals, we build an encyclopedia. Uh, this encyclopedia is the place where you can just turn the globe, click on a country, and essentially learn about what is happening there, what are the projects that are addressing these issues, and how the problems that are being faced by this country are being addressed. The final thing that we built that only launched in December 2019 is a software that helps companies calculate, monitor and reduce their emissions. The software automatically builds sustainability action plans for businesses, making sure that businesses not only are able to uh, understand what is the status quo, but also act on it. After they have reduced their emissions, they also are able to compensate for whatever is left, because Net zero is still quite challenging for a lot of businesses. Since we launched in December, uh, we have attracted over 300 businesses. We have over, uh, over 100,000 people in our community spread all across the world, connected by a chat tool that we have built. And also, we work quite closely with NGOs and scientists to make sure that their agenda is aligned with our agenda. So, the year is 2020, and my knowledge is certainly a lot more than what it used to be in 2017. But it wouldn't matter if it was not for the knowledge of others that I've met on the way and planning has been able to collaborate with. We, together with these people, have been able to connect the dots and make sure that our ideas and opportunities that we see align and are aligned to what is best for the health of our planet. But this blank page is actually uh, how the future looks. Why? Because regardless of the efforts of everyone that is out there, there's still so much to be done. And I invite you all uh, to choose one of the hats that you have as citizens, employees, employers, family members, and decide what action you're going to take today. Because as the most irresponsible inhabitants of this planet, we're still the only ones that have a chance to save ourselves. Thank you.